to talk about uh, why people hate Java again. Oh, I'm so warm. Uh, so, it's kind of interesting. I originally wrote uh, why people, uh, I shouldn't say wrote, I originally filmed a segment on why people hate Java, and I was looking at it from a person writing Java or an engineer writing code that's based on uh, the Java uh, programming language. So, for uh, me, it was really, really interesting to see the response. I got a lot of end-user response. So, uh, I thought it was really, really interesting how it just organically took off, and it was this new thing. So, I'm going to talk about some of the uh, experiences that I've had as, uh, as an end-user, and also uh, some of the experiences that uh, some of my uh, viewers chimed in. I think the biggest problem that you run into a lot of times with Java is the fact that it's always perpetually asking you for an upgrade, which is great. I think it's nothing wrong with that. I, I think what they're trying to do is keep you up to date with, uh, I should, and when I say they, I mean uh, Sun Microsystems. Uh, they're trying to keep you um, up to date with all security uh, vulnerabilities. They're making sure you have the latest all the time. The problem is that, that their process is very intrusive. So you get windows that's popping up all the time, and it's not very intuitive what those windows are asking you. Um, I use a Mac, and uh, I think I still run into that. But I, I see that all the time on Windows machines. It's like as you start, it's boom, right in your face. You have to... <laughs> you. Like, Java would like to install a new update, and you're just like, I just installed one two days ago. Why do you have to do this? So, I think if uh, Java had a, a, a more sophisticated, or I should say Sun develops like a more sophisticated uh, delivery system, or not as user interface, uh, or user interaction heavy, I think they would, they would probably do a lot better in the PR department uh, as far as, like, the end users. So that was one major thing, and I think that's really, really big. Um, I remember one time uh, I wrote a uh, end-user uh, Java Java applet, and this was in the days of Java, I think one one or one two, long, long time ago. And I wrote this applet, and then I deployed it on the web page. And I I was pretty sure that I diligently tested it. I did it on, uh, you know. Um, you know, my machine, my coworker's machine, I ran around in a couple labs, and that was great. I did a lot of spot checking, but the problem is I was on a website that had thousands of viewers. So within an hour, we got a lot of feedback that, hey, this isn't working. This applet isn't working, and it was due to the fact that the applet was great, but everybody's version of Java wasn't um, up to date. So you would get a lot of exceptions, and it was problem with the way the class loader worked. So for me, it was like, whoa, that was an eye-opening experience. But over time, Java got better with that. And I think you went from not having a very interactive update process or a process that would ensure that you're always up to date. They kind of swung all the way into the other camp of just being over excessive in every five seconds. Hey, you got to get this. You got to get that. You got to get that. So that, that's kind of the, the two major things that I've seen um, as being an end user that can be very, very painful. If you don't have the correct version of Java, uh, you won't be able to run certain things. And another thing is that when you uh, have uh, like that, that very intrusive upgrade process. So thank you all for taking the time out, you know, watching the video and uh, commenting. Please, if you have other questions or feel that I omitted something or, or I should be looking at things differently, please reply, comment, do a, a video response. I love to talk about topics. I love it. So please feel free. And thanks again for watching.